Hey everyone, it's Nikenji. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about posing and this topic is actually very dear to me because it is something that I have faced plenty of challenges with in the past and sometimes I still do. But over the years I have become way more confident and I'm hoping to transfer that energy over to you guys in this video. While there are plenty of elements that make a photograph the photograph, like the backdrop, outfit, the mood, the location, the time of day, the colors, and so much more, the pose can really make or break how you feel about a photo so much that it affects your confidence. When I first started posing, I didn't know what I was doing, all right? Majority of the time I was either standing straight and still, or I would do that popular pose that every girly and their mom couldn't resist, where they put their hand on their hip, push out their hip, and just like, yeah. Posing is a very awkward experience. It can be. I was also very anxious with uncertainty because a lot of the times you don't know what's happening on the other side of the camera. So you don't know how you look until you finally see the photo and wish you did it. Over the years in being on both sides of the camera as a photographer and model, I've realized that posing does not have to be difficult. It is all about knowing your angles, showing confidence, and then your body will easily follow. With that said, here are some posing tips that will help boost your confidence at your next shoot. This way you can control how you look in photos and not the other way around. Number one, posture. The more elevated our posture is, the more our confidence and presence exudes. So you could be wearing the most hideous outfit, but with the right confidence and posture, you have the power to change people's minds and opinions about what you're wearing and leave them wanting more. A posture that most of us have come to adapt over the years due to our excessive phone and computer usage is the text neck, which basically is us kind of being hunched over when we're on the computer or when we're on our phones, we're constantly looking down and our shoulders are kind of leaning forward. We don't realize how this can not only affect our posing, but it can also affect our everyday lives. So with that, I have created an acronym to help me reset my posture whenever I settle into that text neck position position during photo shoots. Just know with this acronym, it is something to keep in mind, okay? It's something to say internally, not to recite outside for the public. The acronym is called CZAB, and what it stands for is C for chin up, E for elevating your chest, S for shoulders down and back, A for keeping your abs in. Honestly, I just needed a vowel, so abs in. <laughs> B for breathing in to your pose. This helped me greatly over the years, so feel free to use it as a starting point for your posing journey. Number two, play with angles. Standing straight and facing the camera does not do anything to complement your beautiful features. Since your shoulders are the widest part of your body, that pose can make you look very boxy and unprepared. Like like a robot. So create dimension in your poses by shifting your weight from one side to the next. Basically lean into the side that feels most comfortable for you. If you like standing straight and still in front of the camera, like if you must do this, if this is something that you're into, try separating your legs into a sumo stance and then creating dimension by shifting your weight from one side to the next. Again, lean into the side that feels most comfortable for you and also play with your hands as well. Number three, play with levels. One thing that I absolutely love about posing is the versatility. There is no one pose and then done, end of shoot. There are going to be a series of poses that are gonna be done in a photo shoot that may or may not work for the photographer or may or may not work for you. One way to add versatility to your poses is by playing with levels. You can also do that by sitting down. Sitting down maybe at the edge of your seat and still shifting your weight from one side to the next and playing with your hands again. Another way that you could play with levels is even getting down into a squat, maybe extending your leg a bit. You could still be doing the same pose on your upper body, but your legs could stay in a particular position for balance. That's what I mean by playing with levels. Just do whatever you feel feels right and make the most out of it. Here are some examples of poses that play with levels. Number four, add movement. Adding movement can really set the tone or mood for getting the shot. It also has a way of making your poses more interesting. You can add movement to your posing by playing with maybe flowy parts of your outfit or by moving your body. 
If you are wearing a dress or a scarf that is made up of chiffon or silk or any type of flowy material, play with it. Doing this will add a level of grace and elegance to the overall composition. And it can also take your photo from basic to effortless in like two seconds. Aside from material, if you are able to kick your legs up in the air, do it, okay? If you are able to sway your hands back and forth from left to right, do it, all right? There are no limitations unless the photographer says so. And you don't have to be a dancer you don't have to have major flexibility to do these moves just move how you feel and if it ends up feeling awkward play some upbeat vibey music to get you more in the mood photography is an art the model the composition the landscape is all an extension of that art so there's really nothing like adding some sort of movement to really bring all of those elements together here are some examples of poses that show movement Number five hands. When I first started posing, like I mentioned earlier, I didn't know what I was doing, especially when it came to my hands. So after gaining some experience, I found three ways to pose my hands during photo shoots. Number one was playing with props or accessories. A lot of the times, of course, as long as it's making sense for the photo, you can hold something in your hand that looks natural, such as a coffee cup. If I'm in a hotel room or if I'm at a cafe, holding a coffee cup and acting like I'm drinking it, things like that make sense for the photo and also looks great as a pose. Playing with your accessories. A lot of the times I found myself playing with the rings that are on my finger, so I may just kind of rest them underneath my chest and just play with them naturally as well. Another thing, if I'm holding a bag, a lot of the time with my outfit photos, I am holding a bag. I may play with that as well. I may play with the strap. I may rest my hand on top of the bag, things like that, just to make it look natural. Number two was resting my hands on certain parts of my body. So just depending on what I'm wearing or whichever, I may just rest it maybe on the sides of my hip and pose accordingly. I may also rest it on my shoulder, my actual face, maybe the side of my face, act like I'm thinking about something, whatever. <laughs> like the possibilities are endless, but definitely playing with how you wanna rest it on your body can really help to add that natural feel to your poses. Last but not least, adding movement, as I've mentioned earlier um, in the previous step, is the same thing with this whether you're swaying your hands from side to side or you're dancing that also can work very well in adding versatility and making your poses very interesting in the photos that you end up creating number six energy i cannot stress this enough energy plays a huge part in your posing journey not everybody has a good poker face me being one of them there are a lot of models out there that have mastered it but not everybody is like that and i understand that so all of the negative emotions that you're feeling one day because of something that happened, whichever the case may be, just know a lot of that can show and read through your expressions. And it can also bleed into your overall body language, which will also affect your posing. And we don't want that. You don't want to waste time. You don't want to look back on the photos and be unhappy about what you're seeing because you feel like you could have done better. Try your hardest to leave the negativity outside and bring positive vibes only. I know that will make all of the difference and you'll end up being the happiest person at the end of it all. <laughs> Number seven, practice and have fun. All the steps that I mentioned aren't gonna come overnight, okay? So you're gonna have to practice, 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 practice some more and have fun with it all because the more fun you have, the less it will feel like a chore and the more it will feel like second nature. During my posing journey, I practiced a lot in front of the mirror. So I was playing with angles, playing with levels and a lot of the things that I mentioned. I also went out and started shooting myself in different outfits, playing with props and all the things that I mentioned earlier. And I also worked with other photographers I work with different models. I started learning the different types of body shapes and the poses that work for different body shapes. If you happen to know photographers that you can practice with, practice with them until you have a good kind of like arsenal of poses that you feel work for you that can be like your go-tos. And I'm telling you, once you have that down, everything will become easier as time moves on. Now I do want to mention because every body type is different, some of the poses I mentioned in this video may or may not work for you and that is okay. That just means that some of the poses may need a little tweaking, a little adjusting to work for your body. So long as you keep all of the steps that I mentioned in the back of your mind, I can assure you the whole thing, everything that I mentioned will help greatly in your overall posing journey. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked it. If you didn't, 
let me know why in the comments. <laughs> Please let me know what step resonated with you the most. For me, I really love adding movement because I will forever do that for all of my poses, as well as my acronyms, Sazab. It's just been so helpful to me. I wouldn't say it's second nature right now. It hasn't stuck 100%. Comment if you wanna see more videos like this, if you wanna see posing videos, things like that, more tips, let me know in the comments below. Until next time, take care. Bye.